All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're going to wait around one minute till people get to get to join because Zoom doesn't let everyone in at the same time. Uh, so we're going to start exactly one minute past. Hi again, those who just joined, we're still waiting for, for everyone to be able to, to join. about 20 seconds. All right, we're ready to start. So thank you everyone for joining this webinar about vacation rental accounting. Um, greetings from, from Miami. I'm, uh, I'm attending this from, from the Book Direct show. And there's a lot of very interesting presentations. Also next uh, next week in, uh, in Las Vegas, there's going to be VRMA International. It would be great to meet you all there. Um, but one of the one of the things I noticed in all all the topics that were discussed was that pretty basic business knowledge was or, or things were were being overseen. Specifically, two areas: legal and finance. And those are to to anyone who has ever ever uh, scale the business successfully. They know how small those things seem until all of a sudden they're the most important thing in the world. Now, we're here today with an amazing team um, and we are going to uh, talk about accounting because that's an incredibly important aspect of vacation rental property management. Whether you manage one property that you own yourself or whether you manage thousands of properties in different states, in different provinces, different countries, um, you need to know about the accounting practices. Now, um, for those of you uh, who need to leave early, this will be recorded and it will be available on YouTube later on. Um, and those of you who have joined before, uh, you know, we like to be very interactive. So we'd like you to ask as many questions as you can. And there's, uh, there's really no stupid questions here. Uh, this can be an extremely complex topic, but our mission here is to make it as easy as possible for everyone to understand. Uh, for, the, for the questions, please use the Q&A section in the, in the Zoom app. And if you want, you can use the chat and uh, send a send a brief uh, brief introduction or, or greetings from wherever you are. Uh, I see we have record attendance uh, today. Uh, that's really great to see. But now let's get started. So on this webinar today, we have uh, my name is Marcus, I'm CEO here at Hostaway. We also have Jesse from Simplify, and we got Andrew from Hostaway's customer success team and Maria from Hostaway's product team. Um, we're gonna give, uh, so yeah, whether you're using Hostaway or Simplify or not, doesn't matter, this webinar is for everyone, but I'll give a short introduction. So Hostaway is the leading all-in-one short-term rental software for property managers. Um, we, got, we got people around the world and, um, and we're also a preferred partner of Airbnb, elite partner of Verbo, premier partner of Booking.com. We're integrated with Homes and Villas, Expedia, Google Travel, and since last week, also Hopper. Um, and we serve thousands of property managers with hundreds of thousands of properties pretty much everywhere with many different business models. And now over to Jesse. Yeah, thanks, Marcus. Um... Well, yeah, I'm real excited to chat with everybody today, um, you know, share a little bit about Zimplify. Uh, you know, our mission, we, we exist really to improve our, our clients' lives first, lives first and foremost. Uh, you know, we find that uh, accounting for a small business is hard, but certainly in, in this industry, it, it's even harder. Um, but in addition to that, you, you know, obviously we're here to help our, uh, our clients or and host ways clients, um, people in this industry to achieve uh, better financial results. And, and, and we do that, we have a strong belief that, um, you know, a strong accounting and finance uh, function and, and a high performing financial business includes 
the best software the, or the right software optimized appropriately um, combined with the right people. And so uh, the, that really combines the, the three services and offerings that we have, which start with our consult services to help companies uh, choose, leverage, and optimize the right accounting system and other time-saving applications um, combined with uh, our, our integration platform that we're going to talk about today. Uh, VR platform that integrates those best in class uh, property management systems, uh, especially uh, such as HostAway, uh, with your back end accounting system to, to provide a, a, a different approach to accounting for your um, vacation rental business and, and achieving uh, trust accounting and, and understatements for your owners. Uh, and then, you know, finally, for those folks that not only want the technology and, and the consulting, but also are looking for a fully outsourced accounting team special, that specialize in this industry. Uh, that's where um, Zimplify comes in, uh, where we can become your fully outsourced accounting and finance team. So, uh, you know, let's talk about what we're going to learn today. Um, you know, high level, uh, we're going to talk about how HostAway uh, and, and Zimplify, how we combine to, to pro provide solutions to the accounting and, and finance problems. And we're going to talk about the different problems that uh, really, I, I in our experience, uh, and certainly in talking to HostAway and talking about the different prospects and clients that they have, really all the problems that almost every vacation rental company uh, come uh, encounters. Um, so, you know, as we talked about, it really starts with finding that right uh, technology, which starts with accounting software, also obviously with the right um, property management system, choosing the right system that's going to bring together both your company accounting as well as trust accounting uh, to uh, the uh, integrations um, with those best in class property management solutions perhaps also your property care uh, systems and, and, and other different places that data might be flowing from um, to automate core processes uh, again into one place for for better both owner reporting company reporting and hopefully better make better real-time decisions for you and your business um, and you know in the and part of that uh, you know we, we refer to this as a best-in-class approach, uh, choosing the right property management system combined with the right accounting and finance tools uh, to, to serve the needs of, of your business. And a key piece of that is uh, using a property management system that's going to have the right data, the right flexibility, uh, great APIs um, that is going to provide, give the, make the data available uh, to 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 make good integrations and automate those core processes. So um, certainly I'm going to throw it back uh, to HostAway to talk through some of the things that differentiate HostAway with, uh, from other property management systems from a data and flexibility standpoint. All right. Thank you very much, Jesse. Now, um, that's, that's, I think, all we're going to talk about HostAway and Simplify today. And now it's time to talk about uh, property managers. And I don't think we could have a better expert on that subject here than Andrew. Andrew, could you share a bit what, what you do here at HostAway and, um, and what type of, of property managers you work with and what are their biggest concerns and their main questions? Sure, Marcos. Thank you for the introduction. And... Uh... It is a pleasure being here, you know, with uh, Hostaway colleagues and uh, Jesse and the uh, Simplify team. So what I do, I am a customer success engineer. I'm responsible for making the onboarding of the property managers a good experience, you know, and a profitable one. So what we do, first thing that I do, I ask the property managers, why are they coming to host away, right? That's the first question because we need to understand why are they looking for our system, right? The most common answer is financial information, right? So they need financial reporting. They need to get their numbers in an accurate manner and they have to be able to report sometimes to property owners if we are talking to the property manager that doesn't own the properties. And that's a very common thing. Right. I can see, you know, by some of uh, the attendees, you know, some of them 
uh, I had the privilege to onboard them, and uh, which is great. And uh, they can confirm that, right? So it is uh, a very delicate and very important part of their business, right? So how much money are you making? How is this money, you know, being shown in reports? And uh, we happen to have a very good uh, tool on that. Uh, we have an entire solution, as a matter of fact, because we also have the software and the training and the support on that, right? So then during the onboarding process, you know, what we do is we guide the property managers on how to customize their formulas to get to the financial objectives that they have, right? So as you can see here, you know, on the, this slide, you can see some examples, right? Of formulas that were created, formulas within formulas. And uh, so that will be, you know, the way that we can customize the information that we receive in order to produce an outcome, which is the financial report itself, right? So in order to build that, we need to have the data before we get there, right? And uh, in that part, we can help. You also see, you know, our product director, you know, Maria explain a little bit more about uh, what differentiates the product. And, uh, but we are usually, you know, the second question is, okay, which formulas do you need? right? Because uh, I need to help you, I need to train you, and uh, I can help you, you know, to get started with that. Sometimes some property managers don't have clarity, you know, on what are their financial objectives, right? In that case, they could use help, right? Sometimes they don't know their taxes. Sometimes they don't know uh, how are they making money, you know, how exactly is the formula on how they are charging the property owners, right? So of course we can help up to a point where they know their objectives, right? And in that sense, as like someone like Simplify will help, you know? And many times I was asked, okay, can you get assistance for that? I can get up to a limit, right? Because we are not professional on taxes. Each market, I have awarded clients from, uh, all the continents, right? So uh, needless to say that each one, you know, in each different country, different city, you know, using different taxes. So yes, we can customize, but sometimes, you know, you may need some, uh, the property managers need some experts, you know, working with them, you know, and that's uh, what a, a company like Simplify, you know, could come in handy. Thank and, you very uh, much, Andrew. That's that? that's amazing. Um, and Maria, maybe yes. you can share. Andrew, Andrew <laughs> there are people that come from many so, different continents, but how 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 come we ended up uh, integrated with uh, Simplify, and how were we that, able to to help our that's, masters? That's a very good question. And hello, everyone. I'm Maria. I'm the responsible here, the host away from the products. My uh, my main objective is obviously to drive value to our customers and also to our partners, okay? So that's why part of the solution and when we were thinking about the solution that Andrew just talked about, um, um, the uh, one of the ideas that we had in mind is what type of business do we want to help? So we looked at our customers, we saw that you guys have many different type of business models that we need to cover and that's why this tool is flexible in that way. It's also the same for the point of view of the partner. So um, we need to pass the data as accurately as possible for to simplify to be able to build the trust accounting on top of the solution. And how we do that and how we are different to other PMSs and channel managers, I would say, um, is by making sure that we have the best partnerships with the client, with the uh, sorry with the OTAs out there. So, for every reservation uh, that comes to host away, we are able to identify all the financial fields and break it down, like you see here in examples, whether it's Airbnb, on Verbo, um, obviously our direct channels, etc. All of that information is broken down. We understand perfectly what is tax, what is fees, what is space rates, etc all of that information is passed through our API to, to simplify and they can build that, those services on top of this. The difference here again is that we spend a lot of time thinking how to best serve you as our customers and partners and that we take these inputs from the OTAs to produce the best possible output out there which is what you see here today. 
Thank you very much, uh, much Maria. Before we hand, hand uh, the mic over to, to Jesse, I just wanted to say that uh, the reason why this is complex and the reason why there's so much interest for a webinar like this is that the type of business that a property manager runs needs to be, needs quite a bit more complexity. And, and it is complex because not only do you work with different uh, business models, uh, also, the product that you're selling is something that, unlike most businesses, it will change as as it's go along, it goes along. So, for example, a, a guest can buy additional services. They might extend their stay. They might cancel their stay. And that's something that, that brings additional challenges, both to financial reporting, and it also brings additional challenges to accounting, which, I'm, which is why I'm very happy that we have Jesse on here. Uh, but, well... Needless to say, we, we have every scenario accounted for in the in the integration with Hostaway and Simplify. All right, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Marcus. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think how, you know, I'll speak to a little bit of how we build on top of everything that we just talked about. Um, you know, first of all, I, you know, I like to talk, a lot of folks come to us and they're they're frustrated uh they a lot of times have chosen in my opinion incorrectly a, a property management system because of the the trust accounting functionality and find it very hard to work with um and don't find it accurate the reporting's very difficult um they don't have the flexibility that that you just walked through and the details in the data uh, that you just talked through and and then we also have folks that have a, a very different use case maybe they don't even necessarily need trust accounting for owner statements and reporting but they're an arbitrage client or they own uh, they both own and manage uh their own properties and so they really need a, a flexible solution um, as well as wanting to use, again, that, that best-in-class accounting system, whether it's QuickBooks, whether it's Zero, whether it's uh, Sage Intact, a, a more powerful accounting platform with, with better reporting and, and, and dimensions. Um, and, so, and so that's why you know, we, we built VR Platform, because as we saw people coming to us wanting to solve uh, their accounting problems, and we got in trying to use a lot of the the trust accounting again i'll kind of put that in quotation in, in legacy uh property management systems we found them really difficult to use and we said hey we really want to work with those systems that have great data have great flexibility have great apis and we're going to build that data and we're just going to connect and integrate it with easy to use um accounting software and manage the and, and automate and manage the accounting, whether it's trust accounting or whether it's also the management company accounting. And also, uh, you know, I won't get into this too much in, in this webinar because it probably gets in the weeds a little bit, but bringing your trust accounting and your company accounting into one place really has uh, some superior reporting functionality. Um, and shoot, even from an understatement. So you have a lot of things that happen within your operating account that need to be expenses billed back to your owner. Well, if everything's coming together into one spot and then we're taking all of that data, uh, two things happen. One, we've got better real-time reporting uh, for uh, your company, actually three things, better reporting for your owners um, in a more streamlined uh, process because there's la less uh, data that needs to be manually moved from one place to another. I could um, maybe maybe um, add there that a lot of property managers, they, they see themselves as, as running a business where they they do things, they provide a service. And um, and I think it's clear that a lot of the material out there, educational material is about how to give a good guest experience because we work in the hospitality industry. But I'd like to challenge that because the term property management literally means taking care of someone's properties. Now these properties are in, quite often investment instruments. And it's worth keeping in mind that most of the time when you manage someone's investments, for example, a bank, when you have money on a bank account, that is extremely regulated. You can't just set up a bank. Same thing if you want to want to set up a fund and start investing in stocks, that is extremely regulated in almost every country on the planet. You can't just do it. But because the property manager, they're essentially doing the same thing. They're managing a very valuable asset, real estate. Um, they most of the time don't have the regulatory framework and they don't need to pay millions 
in legal fees just to start a property management company. And this is why it's so important that they make sure they have the accounting in place. Because you're, if you're running a property management business, you're essentially running an asset management business or, or an investment business. Yeah, an in, in, uh, investment yeah. fund. Yeah, I mean, we, we refer to it as, uh, you know, understanding your fiduciary responsibility as a property manager in, in this industry. And that really is whether it's your own asset, you know, uh, certainly if it's your own asset, you're only responsible to yourself. But certainly if you're doing this on behalf of, of your owners uh, as, as a third party pro property manager, a, a great, great fiduciary responsibility that I think folks um, underestimate when they get into the industry. To your point, the barrier to, of entry in this industry is pretty low. Um, and so, you know, they jump into it and, and you know, the nuances, I mean, you, you just walk through, hey, what does my data look like from an Airbnb or from VRBO? You know, I mean, you can take that to booking.com and Travelocity and then you get into channel fees and, and uh, merchant fees and, and then you get into all the expenses and labor that you might be billing the owner. There's a lot of minutia flowing around there. And, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging. There's more to it that I think than folks realize when they first get into it. And so understanding the fiduciary responsibility that you just talked about, Marcus, is, is really, really key for, for any property manager out there. Exactly, Jesse. And and just to be clear here, just because the, there's no regulation preventing you from becoming a property manager, it doesn't mean that that responsibility goes away. You know, if a, yeah. if a bank takes in deposits on the bank account, and then one day you go to take out your money and they say, oh, sorry, it's gone. Well, that's a criminal act and it's mm -hmm. regulated. But if something goes wrong in a property management business because of wrong accounting practices, you're going to be held equally responsible. Yeah. So this is something you should take quite seriously because just because it's there's no preemptive barriers of entry, it doesn't mean that you are any less responsible for these assets that you're managing. Yeah. And certainly some states, some countries do have uh, some regulations around it too. And if you get outside of those regulations, you can be, uh, be in a lot of trouble. We've also seen a lot of um, merchant processors such as Stripe, uh, um, Authorize.net, Lindbrook, et cetera, you know, where they're wanting to see, hey, What's your advanced deposits uh, and how, what's your trust accounting balance? Um, they're wanting to see, hey, understand your processes and know that you're taking that fiduciary responsibility serious or they'll shut down your account. And obviously that, that causes quite a bit of problems uh, if you can't collect, your, collect the money from your guests. Um, well, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, you know, continue on here. Um, you know, when, when we talk about... Uh, you know, the breadth of different financial ma uh, property managers out there. I'm sorry. Um, you know, hey, you really have those folks. I mean, I, I believe that the the average is is around 15 units. Um, it might have even gone a little bit lower than that. Um, as we've seen this explosion of, of property managers and hosts uh, ar around the world. Um, but if we but so you have you have that extreme and then you have the folks that are, uh, you know, managing north of a thousand properties. And so, um, you know, it kind of depends. People, some folks are kind of in that five to 15 and and they're feeling good. But, you know, most folks that, that come to us are looking to to quickly scale, looking for ways that they can streamline their processes uh, and grow and, and achieve that, you know, several hundred to, to north of a thousand uh, properties on, under management. And so we, you know, we can talk here about kind of the different levels, but, um, you know, on one end, they might not have any accounting staff from maybe they're doing themselves or certainly uh, plenty of those folks reach out to us and, and we work with them to handle their accounting. Um, where, uh, and, and then, hey, what kind of accounting system are you using? Uh, probably someone might be using QBO or uh, that's QuickBooks Online or, you know, some folks, when they're that small, they, they might not be using anything. We certainly always recommend to have at least uh, QuickBooks Online it, it, um, or a similar system because it just helps categorize, reconcile your bank accounts, have everything in, a good, in, in good order. And then as you grow, we see folks move into uh, perhaps um, hiring accounting staff in-house or working with a fully outsourced team uh, like Zimplify. And then they'll you know, gradually grow into a more powerful system such as Sage Intec, where you can really get into unit by unit reporting, different department reporting. Um, multi maybe they've got um, multiple entities. Uh, you know, we've got some clients 
managing north of a thousand properties and they actually manage those in, in multiple uh, property manager management companies, um, sometimes at, uh, operating in different states. And so they really segregate you know, multiple trust accounts, multiple uh, management company reporting. So, you know, obviously that's the most complex, um, but but really just looking at, hey, uh, you know, using this, again, best in class approach, working with HostAway, the flexibility that it, that it has, using uh, an integration platform such as uh, VR platform to then connect with the right accounting system really allows you as you grow, hey, well, someday you might say, hey, well, I've outgrown QuickBooks. Well, no problem. Hey, we're going to flip off QuickBooks. You can still continue to work with HostAway, but we're going to use a different accounting system to help you continue to scale. Jesse, I got a question here from the from the audience. And, and those, those of you who know me, you know that I, I, I relate a lot to the property managers. Now, when, when someone is setting up a business, there's an endless amount of things to do and to think about. I mean, you need to figure out, do you even have money to start a business? Do you have, do you know anything about marketing, about sales? Where are you going to get help? What if you have a problem? Who are you going to ask? And of course, starting a property management business, I mean, if you don't have any properties, it's almost impossible to get started. But as a business then starts growing, um, usually you have done shortcuts in some areas. And if that area is accounting, what are, what are those red flags? You know, when, when should a property manager, someone who started with one property, went to two, maybe five, when, when should they start questioning and looking through whether their accounting is set up correctly? Uh, you know, my answer to that question is always pretty simple. Before you have your first property is really my answer. Um, you know, if unless you're really just planning just to manage one or two properties and, and never go anywhere. Um, I shouldn't say not go anywhere, but you know, Hey, that's just, that's just what you're doing. You, you're managing one or two properties for you and maybe a friend. And, um, but, you know, ultimately most people are coming to us, you know, you know, a lot in that three to five property place, because it's there that you set the foundation for software uh, processes and, uh, you know, setting up the foundation to allow you to begin to scale. And so really it's day one or day minus 10, you know, or 30 that you should be thinking about, Hey, what systems am I going to be using? What's going to be my processes, et cetera. All right. Sorry. Um, so, uh, you know, just getting, getting back here a little bit more into, um, tr trust accounting, uh, you know, keep, keep accounting cash flow separate. So as we talk about the differences between, um, uh, or the importance, I guess, you know, we talk about that fiduciary responsibility between, uh, trust accounting, company accounting, and, keeping your guest deposits, cleaning fees, all those things that are coming from either your merchant processor or your channels, um, keeping that in, in one bank account and then transferring that money uh, when necessary to owners, to uh, sales tax and other vendors, um, or and then also segregating out your, your operating accounting, right? The, the, the company accounting um, so that you, you understand, hey, what's your management company income? Uh, all, all the different payroll, marketing, um, et cetera, that, that makes up that accounting to understanding the performance of your business. Um, and, you know, next, hey, why accounting integrations? Again, you know, I think we've talked about this a lot, um, but what, what we find is that using, um, you know, using some legacy systems and using the accounting systems within property management system. Well, you know, they're not really not a, they often don't work well with others. B, you know, they're hard to use that porting is, is often inflexible. You have, no matter what, you're going to have data that needs to flow from one place to another. And so um, by, by using integrations, it allows us to have, uh, you know, automate a lot of different processes, um, certainly eliminate um, typos and, and errors um, from manually entering uh, data from, from one place to another. It also helps us, you know, most importantly, in my, in my opinion, is it really gives us real-time uh, reporting 
um, so that you know, hey, what's the management company income that, that I've earned on the 15th of the month for this month, not waiting till the 15th of November to know how much I made in October. We want to know, hey, what, what do my financials look like on a day-to-day -day basis so that I can really have good insight into the performance uh, of, of my business? And then obviously, you know, we've talked a lot about, hey, complying with regulations and, and different uh, banking requirements and that, that fiduciary responsibility that's so important. Um, you know, I'm, I've listed here different ways and, and reasons why, uh, you know, perhaps you need, you are encountering issues. Um, these are, these are a lot of the different reasons why folks come to us to say, Hey, Jesse, we really need some help. They've, they've got multiple entities or, or, um, you know, somewhat of a complex, um, business model, meaning they might have different property management companies, um, multiple property holding companies as well. And so they need a way to consolidate all of that. Uh, if they're having trouble just with trust accounting in general, um, they just find the, the cycle to close, have good reporting for the owners or their own business, um, takes too long. Uh, they're looking for better reporting. You know, we have a lot of folks that come to us and say, hey, uh, you know, I wish I had better insight, better KPI tracking and reporting. And so that's really where we start getting into Sage Intact and how uh, that system can, can better help, um, you know, this industry understand and have greater visibility into their performance um, or, you know, they need uh, advanced functionality. So again, that gets back to, Hey, having a deeper insights using different dimensions. Uh, you know, we actually, for a lot of our clients, um, well, and actually I was on a panel uh, down in um, with the CFO of Sykes and CFO of VTrips, you know, several months ago, and they talked a lot about the importance of, uh, you know, having, understanding profitability on a unit by unit basis. And, you know, those are, um, uh, those are property managers that manage thousands of homes and they're analyzing the profitability on a unit by unit basis. And so, um, you know, that's really some of the deep, uh, deeper insight and visibility that we help uh, our clients achieve. Um, you know, finally, I, I did just want to show, um, you know, this is our, uh, owner statement portal. So when we talk about bringing all the data into one place uh, from the property management system, but then you've also got your bank that you're reconciling, your credit cards, that you're reconciling different um, uh, different expenses that need to be charged to the owner. Once that data is in, you know, say QuickBooks or Sage Intact or whatever accounting system is being used, you know, that's where we pull the data back out into um, an owner statement that can be published and also sends the money right to your to your owner's bank accounts. And so, um, you know, that kind of finalizes, you know, the process, at least from an owner statement reporting perspective. Um, I've, I've included here, you know, sample income statement. Uh, one thing that we really help clients uh, focus on and think about is, hey, what is my um, what does my management company P&L look like and understanding the different parts of that P&L and how it relates to your, to your rental revenue. So understanding the ratios, how much uh, for every rent revenue, what's the dollar that's going down to gross profit? What's your percentage of, of payroll as a percentage of rent revenue? Um, and, and finally, obviously, hey, your, your bottom line, what's your bottom line as a percentage of that gross rent that you're bringing in every day? And understanding the, the trends in these different ratios can really help people plan and, and, and understand and also compare themselves to other, uh, other property managers in the industry. For example, we always tell folks, hey, your target should be at least 8% of net income as a percentage of rent revenue. So if you're doing better than that, you know, that's really a good benchmark to start uh, looking and comparing yourself to others in the industry. Um, so I know I just <laughs> spit out a bunch of information or I think we all did. Uh, so certainly would love to hear any other questions that might be out there. All right, thank you very much for giving uh, a very, <laughs> such a such a great summary on a, on a very uh very complex topic uh we have a bunch of questions here so now is the time to ask any questions you want but i if i see if i may just yeah. remind everyone to use the q a 
not the chats because the Q and A we can't compile all the questions there and then uh, maybe go back to answer those questions later on if we don't have time to hear here today. So I see questions being posted on the posted on the chat, but please if you can move it to the Q and A, that'd be awesome. Thank you. All right, I'm I'm gonna pick one question here from Annette uh, because I think I have an answer that if my accountant knew what I was saying here, they would they would not be happy at all. But Annette is asking, are the systems able to correct past mistakes with uh, with bookkeeping? Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure Jesse also disagrees with me. Uh, but here's the thing, when uh, bookkeeping is, is not an exact science. Now, this is not a fact, this is my opinion, just for reference. Uh, what I mean is that is, is that accounting and bookkeeping is literally keeping books of what's happening. And that needs to be related to the real world. But things happen in the real world. For example, if you if you got a bunch of receipts on your on your desk, let's say a big pile, if one of those pieces of paper goes missing when you type it in somewhere, then yeah, that's a mistake. But if the paper is missing, how are you ever going to know? Sure, you might loop, have to pay some more taxes, but I would be surprised if there's a single company that's publicly traded that has a 100% uh, correct accounting. And as a general rule of thumb, if you find out that you've been doing things wrong, as long as it doesn't hurt someone, as long as you haven't been stealing from, from taxes or stealing from the homeowners, and also look at the scale of things. If you know, you're know you doing 3 million and there's a, a $25 mistake, but it will take you two weeks of work to fix that, maybe it's not worth it. And maybe the risk if you get caught is so small that it's, it's better to take that risk. Um, and and if you have big mistakes, if it turns out that you were supposed you you owe people tens of thousands, then probably you should fix that. But Jesse, what what do you think? Should you be concerned about past mistakes with bookkeeping? Yeah. And do you I mean, hate me now? <laughs> well, no. I mean, I mean, look, I, I I think we help clients make judgment calls all the time about because people come to us and they like haven't done their books in like two years, right? And it's like, okay, well at what level are we going to reconcile two years worth of financials? Like if we were going to do, redo it perfectly the way that we would have done it, if we were doing it initially, like the cost is just way too high. Right. So we have to help companies understand, make, uh, let's call it materiality uh, judgment calls on uh, what is a mistake versus, you know, what is just, you know, reporting to say get taxes done I, th I think the question as, as i understood it is hey is the software going to go back and like be some sort of ai machine and figure out where there were mistakes and, and automatically correct them you know no you know that's not what the system is is intended to do what the you know and when we talk about automation you know uh, there's different levels of automation even with uh, you know, data flowing over and we post payments out from Airbnb and Stripe. And there's still a, a lot of reconciliation that still has to be done, um, right? I mean, there's, you, you've got resolutions that you have to, you know, you always have to make sure are being coded correctly, dealing with cancellations and host always got great data, you know, from that. But but still, you know, you've got to make sure that, hey, everything's being reconciled, everything matches the cash coming in, you know, producing all the different reports. And, um, but, you know, to your point, Marcus is, is, Hey, like, yeah. And in, in an accounting world, um, making uh, judgment calls, like, for example, I, I see people get real hung up on like merchant fees, right? Like, like Stripe merchant fees. Um, and, uh, charge when do they charge them do they charge them when the the guest and when it's withheld from the merchant or do they uh charge it to the owner at the time of the arrival uh when they're paying out rental income do they do an exact amount or do they just do an estimated amount and it's like hey set up the process that is just that helps you streamline your business and so that both you and the owner get you know, close to the right place. So we recommend, hey, either charge it exactly to the owner when, it, when it's withheld from the merchant, 
or calculate like a three and a half percent of all, you know, let's say non-Airbnb fees that you're going to charge uh, owners a, a merchant fee on, on every non-Airbnb reservation. Like those are some ways to think about, hey, how am I going to set myself up to really scale this business? Because what you can do for five, you can't do for 1500 units. And so you really have to make those decisions. All right. Now here's a good question from Paula. Uh, she's She has a company in Colombia that manages properties in USA. What would be the best way to pay taxes as a Colombian company on the USA properties? That's that's not a question I'm uh, you know, really willing to, to jump into. Um, I, I completely understand that. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. inter international tax is, is really, really complex. I, I, I have a master's degree in tax, but I, I gave up my tax um, uh you know, life many moons ago. Um, and even if I did, you know, I don't specialize in international tax. So very, very of, understandable. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of things to consider there. My my biggest recommendation is find yourself, you know, either a, a Colombian uh, CPA or, you know, chartered accountant that has uh, experience with international tax, especially in the U.S. or find someone here in the U.S. I, I, I know a few that I'd be willing to recommend, but it's a really hard question to answer on this call. Yeah, I can maybe give some some general uh, guidance there if you're operating in multiple pool countries. Um, if if your main source of revenue is is from one place, in this case the U.S., you you will have many advantages if you if you just set up a company there. It can be owned by a foreign company, but uh, but one example is is what Jesse touched upon here earlier, getting getting access to uh, to payment processors. Actually, just last night I met a met. A client of ours from Colombia who is who has set up a company in the United States to manage her properties, and that's why she's able to process credit cards. And um, yeah, so good answer there. Um, Keith has a lot of questions. He sounds like he's really excited about this topic. Thank you, Keith, for posting all the all the questions. I think most of these are for um, Simplify rather than Hostaway. So I'll summarize here and, and Jesse, you could, you could choose. So he he asked uh, cost, onboarding is in time frame. He, he uses very few words when he asks. Replacing QBO with Simplify, ease of specific documentation into software. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe you can share a bit about the, the process, yeah, how I mean, a typical well, property manager comes to you and what, what happens next. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, cost is something I, I won't get in, into today. I mean, one, it, it depends on a lot of different things. Complexity, are they using QuickBooks? Are we going to use Sage Intact? How many entities, how many properties? So, that you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, typically, our onboarding is going to be anywhere from four to eight weeks. Um, the other piece of the puzzle that I'll, I'll say is I want to be really clear that, hey, we're not replacing QuickBooks. Uh, we're going to connect HostAway with QuickBooks to automate uh you know, and, and integrate the, the data sharing um, so that the what's happening in HostAway is being reflected real time uh, with within QuickBooks and also use that data to produce, um, you know, the owner statements to your owners and also look at other applications that might be useful to automate processes such as bill pay solutions, payroll uh, solutions, etc. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so Zimplify really provides the middleware that's going to help connect the two systems. We're going to provide the consulting that's going to help you optimize and make sure that QuickBooks is set up in a way to facilitate best reporting. And we're also going to help you understand, hey, is, is QuickBooks the right so solution or is it maybe, uh, you know, a more powerful ERP or accounting system such as Sage and Tax. So, you know, those are going to be the things that we go through. I just, rec I just suggest, hey, if you're having those questions, you're interested in learning more, you know, reach out um, to to Britt. I think Britt or myself, you know, we'll we'll share our emails here in a bit. Um, you know, where we can set up some calls and and learn more about your business. Now I'm going to answer a question that's also not for Hostaway and actually not for Simplify. It's a question for Zoom. So Voyage Finance put in the chat. Um, she, she's not able to see the questions. Yeah. So when you put a question in the Q&A, 
uh, it's only us panelists who can see that question. So that's why we're reading questions that you don't see. Um, but for some reason, I can't answer in the in chat either, um, which is weird. So please try to use the Q&A function. I got one more question here for, for Simplify. Uh, actually, a lot of different people are asking if you provide services in Ontario, in, in Poland. Um, can you share a bit about your, your market reach? Yeah. I'll yeah. show you. I had the same question from Thierry saying which markets that you cover outside of the US. Yeah. Yeah, for, from a services standpoint, um, we currently only provide accounting services in the U.S. Um, we have, uh, I guess that's not completely true. We have a few European countries um, that we have provided some services for. Uh, the services issue becomes a lot more challenging um, internationally because of uh, you know there's just a lot of accounting rules that we don't necessarily have. There's also a lot of different. Uh, applications and tools that aren't available to us in those other countries that we have here in the U.S. That being said, um, one in Canada, um, we're actually uh, looking to, to begin working with some chartered accountants in Canada to start supporting the Canadian market. So that should um, be coming soon. Um, I, I also will say that from a from an integration, from a software standpoint, wanting to use um, QuickBooks, host away, integrate your systems, use the the owner statement portal and platform. Um, you know, all of that is available. Uh, you know, out, outside of the US. Certainly there are um, language considerations there where we do only offer our solution uh in a in an English um based platform. So um you know, that's where we're at from an international perspective. We are looking to, again. Canada, certainly from a services standpoint, we're looking in, uh, you know, Australia to kind of do something similar as well as the UK. Um, actually, our our the the tech company that we kind of joined forces with is actually out of the UK um, to to build VR platform, and so that's where they're they're housed. But um, you know, hopefully that answers that question. We're we're mainly U U.S. focused uh, currently, certainly from a services standpoint. All right, there's a question here that maybe Andrew can answer. Um, uh, let's see who it was. Anonymous attendee is is looking to get some help from Hostaway on uh, and go over the, the accounting and reconciliation uh, piece. Andrew, can you share a bit about how, how, that's, uh, how they can get in touch with us? Yes, yeah, sure. So th there was one specific question I was about to answer that about the uh, and they also mentioned the anonymous also mentioned the the onboarding specialist yeah that would be a way you know especially because the onboarding specialist would be familiar you know with the system with the the client and the, it would be able to guide to schedule another meeting you know to go over that and to see information from financial reporting help to uh, see the information from stripe you know, so in order to download both information and do the conciliation, yeah, that would be a way. They can also reach out to support at hostaway.com. That's another way. Or if needed, you can also email me, you know, Andrew at uh, hostaway.com. I'll be glad to help. Okay. So there is a question on refunds as well from Jeffrey. So refunds is always from Hostaway. So you, refunds is also something that we want to bring into the roadmap for our solution. And that data will also be passed on to our API for Simplify to use as well. Um, but yeah, that's the answer. All right, there's a, a question here for, I think, Maria. Uh, what is the, the best way to match Stripe transactions to certain properties? So it depends on what uh, transactions uh, they mean. So is the guest transaction or is the payment to the owner? Or uh, I, I'm going to assume that is the guest transaction. OK, so that's the one that we deal with at Hostaway anyway. So. Um, um, in order to match a transaction from Stripe to, to Hostaway, there is an, an ID you can see on the dashboard uh, from every charge that comes from Hostaway that is added to the reservation. In our financial reporting tool, um, you can also see 
there is a field that you can you can use that is called payment provider on top of my head. I don't know, so it's quite a long name, long name. Uh, payment service provider commission, I think, or fee, I think it is. That is the calculation uh, provides the uh, the value of the uh, of the um, commission that Stripe takes for every transaction. So on financial reporting, you have the ability to see all of your transactions per guest, per listing, and identified the, uh, the Stripe transaction per each of those guests or bookings. I'll take that just a little step further, Maria, with how we work with the data within Hostaway and bring it into QuickBooks and then reconcile. So. Um, for us, you know, a reservation creates an invoice within QuickBooks. Um, a a payment uh, on that invoice um, is then posted to the invoice, but it's actually we we deposit it into what we call a Stripe clearing account or a, a credit card uh, payment clearing account. Um, and so all of those individual payments sit in that clearing account. Folks might also be familiar with an undeposited account. So it works very similar to an undeposited account. Um, our VR platform, we also have an integration with, with Stripe. And so, and, and we use the metadata that HostAway posts in Stripe for that payout. So when that payout actually comes out, of um, of Stripe, we actually record a, a what we call deposit journal. And so it records the exact amount of cash that's going to hit the bank account because often, you know, a, a payout from Stripe includes multiple um, reservation payments. And so we'll record the cash, but then we'll itemize, uh, we'll, we'll credit the, the that payment clearing account for all of the different payments that make up that batch deposit. And so the way that the way that it's reconciled is that payment, which becomes a debit in the payment clearing account, is matched against the credit from the payout from Stripe to reconcile to zero. So a clearing account is kind of what it says, is it's really clearing the zero. So we should expect a payment posted from Hostaway that equals a, a payout deposit. From the from the deposit journal within Stripe, and so that is um, our process. Both you know whether you're just using our software, or whether we're doing it for our clients, how we've re, uh, worked to streamline that that Stripe reconciliation process. I'll I'll try to try to broaden that that answer a bit because I think there's this is a, a very common point of confusion in a lot of situations and it's not specific to host away or, or simplify um, whenever you're doing something related to money with a, which is transactional it's very important for you and once again regardless of how you do it you can do it in a spreadsheet if you want but you need one point of truth so earlier i mentioned having a pile of receipts on the table when it's over there the, the place where i go to see what it, what is the reality is that pile but the moment I take up my spreadsheet or my accounting software and I insert those receipts there, the responsibility is moved. So that's the, the system of truth. And uh, for example, with Hostaway, a lot of customers, they use Hostaway as the original source. So then you wouldn't need to look at your bank account. You wouldn't need to look at Stripe. You would have everything inside Hostaway, but that's not the only way you can do it. You can also have QuickBooks as a source of truth. You can have Simplify as a source of truth, but this is where a lot of confusion comes from. And I think that's more of a decision that you need to have because ultimately, you know, if you want to keep track of things, you need to choose where do you go to see whether it's done correctly or not. Yeah. There's a very, very uh, good question here from anonymous attendee. How does trust accounting work? <laughs> I, I think we could spend two hours, but maybe Jesse, can you try answer that in 15 words or less? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can quite do it in 15, but I'll, I'll, at its core, trust accounting means tracking money held on behalf of others. And take, take that another a step further, it means that you have a pile of cash 
ideally uh, in, in trust accounting also means that you've segregated it from your own cash, your own operating cash. So it should be sitting in its own bank account. And at the core, it's that, hey, every dollar that sits within that trust account is owed to someone else. It actually, some of it might be owed to you as the property manager, but it's made up of effectively five different things. Advanced deposits, money owed to the owner, money owed to sales tax, uh, or lodging, occupancy tax, VAT tax uh, authorities, um, outside, outside vendors. And then again, the fifth is, is typically you as the property manager. And so the idea is that at any given time, you should be able to reconcile the amount of cash that's sitting in your trust account to what are the liabilities, who is all of that money owed to? Advanced deposits to guests, money to the owner, money to sales tax, lodging tax authorities, money to other vendors, money to yourself. Ultimately, that's the idea behind trust accounting. Thank you very much. Now, here's a question, uh, maybe for Maria and Andrew. What about if a client wants an integration with accounting software in Poland or anywhere else for that matter? So, sorry, can you repeat that? Um, I, I think it's for for Hostaway. Oh, okay. um, so, what if what if uh, they want an integration with accounting software somewhere else outside the U.S.? What would be a good solution? Well, for the time being, um, we will need to look into that. I'm afraid I don't have any solution for if, uh, an accounting software. In, yeah, in I, I, mean, I, think, I think I'll answer that a little bit in that, um, you know, probably the most prevalent international accounting system uh, outside of, you know, QuickBooks um, would probably be zero. Um, it's something that we have uh, the ability to. We actually have an integration built with Zero, but we don't have any uh, current workflows working from HostAway to Zero. Um, you know, a little bit of that is just based off of demand. That it's something that we haven't. Uh, you know, we have so many people demanding and wanting integrations with Sage Intact and QuickBooks Online that it just hasn't been something that there's been a big enough demand for us to build a workflow to Zero. So. Um, you know, that's probably the, the um, you know, the best solution and one that we could do. Uh, and, and we've offered to, we've had a few clients come to us and we've offered to, to do some um, kind of pilots with them. So anyway, if it's something that you're interested in, certainly we could talk, talk to you about and see what might be available. All right, we got about uh, three minutes left here. Uh, do you want to pick any, any questions? I got... Uh... Got quite a few, few here that we won't have time to answer. All right. Well, then I'll I'll answer the the what about a different a different accounting system. Um, I can say that Hostaway is designed to be able to work with your accountant, and I can actually give a real live example. So we we run uh, for our customers when we get revenues from our customers, we run them on on subscriptions managed by Stripe. But Stripe doesn't integrate with our accounting software. Now that's, you must be wondering, how is it possible? How can we run a business this way? Well, it's super simple. We provide the statements to our accountant and our accountant combines that with many other things that they take care of and put it into, I don't even know what accounting software they use. Um, but we have lots of property managers that are doing exactly the right thing. They set up host away so that it produces the right statements that their accountant needs. And then the accountant, whatever system they're using it on um, or using it with, they get the right data because that's all the account an accountant need is just the data. And as long as you have the right information inside the source of truth, in this case, host away, it's going to be 100% accurate for the accountant. And of course, if you're your own accountant and you do your own accounting, well, that's when when it might get get tricky. But for most accountants that do this, they they work with well, there's millions of different systems with data points, just like Hostaway, and they can work with any of them as long as you can provide the right data. And we we built Hostaway in a way so that we can provide the right provide the right data regardless of 
what country you're in. Yeah, and to add to that, Marcos, every data, financial data can be downloaded on a CSV format, right? That can be uploaded to any software because it is a universal format, right? So it, it's, it's not an issue to map it and upload to anyone. That's how many of our clients do. All right. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, just a final word here from, from Jesse. Anyone who wants to get in touch with Simplify, how do they reach you? Uh, you can reach us at jesse at zimplify.com. Let me, I, I stopped sharing my screen there because I thought uh, we show everybody here, but I think I've got some emails uh, on here somewhere. Um, looks like we've just got it host ways, but uh, you can find us at zimplify, zimplify.com really is, is probably the easiest way uh, to connect with us. So that's X-I-M-P-L-I-F-I, zimplify, zimplify.com. We'll also be- exactly. International uh, conference next week. If anybody's there, we'll be in booth 236. So feel free to stop by. Yeah. And if you want to want to learn more about Hostaway, hostaway.com is the right place. If you're an existing customer, please reach out to us at support at hostaway.com. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a, have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.